Hello everyone, and welcome back to one of our fun little Nuclearis videos. Now there's been a lot of changes in this program uh, since we did our first initial video that went, whoa, a little viral, thanks to that uh, wonderful individual who gave me that little shout out there a little while ago. And uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to be kind of working our way through uh, sort of what the changes are, and I'm uh, looking at some of the stuff that's kind of a little bit different here in our lovely nuclear power plant. Uh, one of the big things that is really, 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 really different, of course, is the fact that now we have to actually tell downtown we intend to send them power. Uh, the other thing, of course, that we have to do to make things a little bit more challenging for us is now we have to do things where we have to synchronize generators and all that other kind of stuff. And it's it's a little different, and it's uh, kind of cool. I appreciate the fact that they're adding, adding levels of detail into things. But at the same component, it's like, um... <laughs> Make it a little challenging for us as well. Hey, I've got plenty of fuel. I'm not going to worry about that as well. All I'm doing there is just uh, running up a couple of these prestige points uh, so we can have a couple points in the bank for when we want to do it. Now, one thing people say, why are you running sideways? is because you move faster when you run sideways. So let's go ahead and get this uh, show going kind of a thing like that. So we'll activate our individual systems. Uh, we just had an update. So, of course, what does it do? Uh, they go ahead and reset all my speeds. Uh, don't do that. Go ahead and change those. You're going to want to use a maximum. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to want to use maximum speed there, and the reason, of course, being is it's going to give you a little more time to kind of get everything going. What do we have for pressure, by the way? Reactor core, we have none. So let's go ahead and get this thing cooking right away. Boop, that sounds good to me. And of course, so we can insert the fuel and all that, but I'll finish activating everything while that's kind of getting warmed up there. So the big thing that's different now, of course, is our generator options. And the generator options, they're different. We have a synchroscope now, and of course, we have a bypass valve and all this other kind of fun things, which makes our lives a little bit simpler. So uh, we're going to go ahead and experiment with that as well. Set this to slow speed. We'll go ahead and engage this. We have a new vacuum pump. The vacuum pump basically just makes the condenser work better, kind of a thing like that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this guy going. I don't know. We have number three. We'll get it nice and slow. Like I said, nothing too sophisticated. Uh, of course, when we come over here now, notice the energy generation is this whole panel now, as opposed to the way it used to be. Our coolant system actually got moved over here. Which I'm, I'm not going to call it frustrating. I'm just going to call, hey, stop moving things. <laughs> Personally, in my opinion, I know what they're going to end up doing. If I had to guess, is they're probably going to go ahead and change the way that this is going to work. Uh, let's see. And control rods must be inserted. I thought I loaded it. Oh, that's right. I do that every single time. Uh, one of the things, of course, is why do they have to change the position of all this stuff? There you go. Now we can actually shove the control rods. S-I-G-H, my guy. S-I-G-H. So that's going to go ahead and start warming up. Uh, one thing that we're going to have to do is uh, start filling up the condenser. Uh, remember, this is all different. I think at some point what they're going to have is they're going to have like a big panel kind of here in the middle where we can kind of like look at this way to the individual components. But uh, we'll kind of see how that sort of shakes out with time. I'm just waiting for the vacuum to kind of build up there. Uh, we've already got ourselves a little bit of vessel pressure. Uh, we've got a little bit of flow of the coolant. Again, slow. I can go ahead and kick that thing. Oops, see daisies. Why did I do that? Click. I'll go ahead and turn that one on right away. Let's see how we're doing as far as water. And again, I don't know why they start this at not the nominal value. Like, it just feels like an extra step, in my opinion. I don't know why that is, but it's just kind of the way it is. Now, one of the things they've changed in the electrical panel, if we come floating over here, is you notice we have the presence of bypass valves. We have the synchroscope. None of this is going to make sense. And of course, we have resistors. Uh, the purpose of resistors, of course, are basically to steal electrical power off of our power so we don't send too much electricity downtown. Um, that's an important concept, and there's a great automatic mode here. Uh, you can see that our limiter, of course, is uh, 5,000 kilowatts, which is not a heck of a lot of power. Uh, that's OK, though. Like I said, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Let's see here. We have coolant flow. Uh, we are moving. Let's see how we're doing as far as the condenser goes. It's coming. We can actually start warming things up a little bit here. And by a little bit, I mean like a little tiny bit kind of thing like that. That's going to go ahead and uh, kick everybody off. And again, remember, we have to wait for pressure here. We need to get coolant flowing. And then, of course, once we make steam, we have to put up with all this, which is kind of the goal of our video today. And we're getting a heck of a little warning here. We have a dry pump warning. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off right away. Uh, we don't want to be running a dry pump. That's actually a very unhealthy kind of a thing like that. Give that a few moments to kind of cool back down. And of course, our little uh, vacuum pump is finished. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that off. That looks good to me. All right, so we're looking pretty darn good. Uh, cooling pump looks good. Again, I just need a little bit more water in there. Uh, this one's going to give us a big angry a level warning here, but that's okay. Once we start building steam, it's not going to really matter at all. Looking over here, uh, 168, so uh, that's plenty. We can go ahead and shut the heaters off. Uh, one of the things I recommend doing after you do that, just come over here and pop this over to low. Uh, the reason being is that there's no reason to... Uh, we're going to have to turn it on in a few minutes anyway. So now we're ready to go ahead and uh, kick off fusion. Um, but like I said, it only takes a few moments to get this thing going. So we do 95, hit the set button. That's going to really slide those suckers off. You're going to get a bunch of angry warnings here. And uh, the temperature is going to go, <laughs> go flying upwards, which is exactly what I expect. 
One thing I just want to take a look at real quickly here is I just want to take a gander to make sure everything's open. I'm just looking at my valves and stuff like that. Tower's good. A D1 pump is good. Core valve. Steam release is good. I'm actually going to... We're about to get a... Oh, 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 oh. Can't miss it. That seems safe. <laughs> Should I be in the same world when that happens? All right. It looks like our condenser is fully filled with water. I, I wish the condenser fill valve was by the condenser. Wouldn't that be handy? And you can see our reactors are coming up pretty quick. So what is different now? So not only do we have resistor banks that are basically designed to absorb excess energy, but we now have the ability to go ahead and actually synchronize the electricity coming out of our turbine with the electrical grid. And uh, this is an interesting little process because um, we'll go ahead and take a look at this once we get here. And of course, there's the field excitation and oh boy, it's um, it, it's fun. It's fun. Like you'll see once we get to that phase, it's, it's, it, it's different but it's a kind of a neat process. And anybody who does a lot of work with generators probably knows exactly of the fun that we're gonna to have to experience in a few minutes here. So we're a little high on our condenser here. We probably should have shut off the feed valve a little bit sooner. I'm not too worried about it though, because uh, once this starts to actually generate steam, the condenser value is gonna come sliding downwards. So I'm not, like I said, too, too worried about that. So we're 142, well, we're generating heat pretty quick. We're actually gonna start producing steam in a moment. And of course, we know we're going to produce steam because I can see the internal temperature of my steam in here starting to come up quite a bit. Once this crosses 100 degrees, this is going to come down and this is going to come down as well. And the two will kind of come together as you're going to see in a minute. 164, we can go ahead and pop on the pressurizer again. Now, one thing you can do with the pressurizer is you can actually get your operating assistant to do the pressurizer for you. And uh, if you want to do that, of course, you can hit tab, come up to operating assistant, see how there's a request to maintenance and all these other kind of just option. So, of course, one of the things we can do here is uh, we can come in here and actually look at all these like fun little things you could do. We can actually tell him to do the pressurizer. It costs five prestige points per hour. That's cheap. Uh, notice you need an upgrade for it, though, and uh, we can't actually afford it yet. So uh, we'll get that eventually. But like I said, nothing too, too crazy here. It's just routine stuff for us. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to be dealing with a bunch of things happening at the same time. Now, one thing, of course, is our temperature is going to shift rapidly, and uh, that's going to give us all sorts of problems on that team side, and then we're going to have to adjust that. Ah, it's part of the fun, as they say, part of the fun. All right, temperature looks good there. Uh, coolant flow, we can actually bring up the coolant pretty dramatically here. Come up to medium speed, we'll do 49 in case we get audited. Everybody gets all excited about that. It's no big deal. All right, that's going to start circulating the coolant off of that, which, of course, is going to increase the temperature of our steam generator pretty darn quick. And I noticed, by the way, uh, we're not pulling any coolant through it. But what's going to happen in a moment is that number is going to start coming down very fast. Next, what's going to happen is our energy generator is going to suddenly start rotating. And uh, how do we know it's going to start rotating? Oh, you just wait. <laughs> it's going to happen. And, of course, this is, up, like I said, part of the fun. And now it's going to be producing steam. Let's see, we are up to 38 bar. Uh, we're coming up very quick. Told ya! So now you can actually watch the pressure come down as we're going to start generating some stuff here. Notice everything's going to turn green on us at once. Uh, you're going to see a bunch of numbers change. The synchroscope is suddenly going to light up. And of course, uh, this is the time when we can start kind of uh, reeling everybody in and uh, start getting it to where we need it to go. Go ahead and get this one turning. Of course, which one did it hit? It hit the wrong one. That's the one I want. Go, go, go! We'll go ahead and crank this thing up to about 35%. What that's going to do is it's going to make this number get bigger, which is happy. Uh, coming over on this side, the generator's just starting to produce power. Uh, temperature's coming up very fast. I'm actually going to kind of head it off at the pass, so to speak. We'll do 99 set. That's going to slow that process down. And now we get the fun part. And that's going to be kind of stabilizing our reactor. So I notice that my condenser level is very, very high right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'll kick this thing on as well. There we go. Start getting a little bit of circulation going here. And uh, what that will do is now we have to play the let's get everybody nice and balanced game because we're running everything so quickly here for the purposes of a video that lets you see things. So what we have to do, of course, is we have to go ahead and synchronize our generator now with everything out in the world. Now, right now, you can see our generator is producing plenty of electricity, uh, most of which, by the way, is being absorbed by our handy dandy little resistors. Uh, the purpose of the resistors, like I said, is they're going to be absorbing quite a bit. We now have to call downtown and say, hey, guys, just so you know, we're about to send you a bunch of electricity. You know, we can't just throw electricity at them like uh, we used to be able to do kind of a thing like that. And uh, the reason for that, of course, is because that's just not how it works in the real world. But one of the things we have to do is we have to send the electricity at a specific frequency. And uh, that's kind of part of the fun. We have the generator and then we have the bus. And uh, of course, this is the power off the city. This is the power off the generator. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the comm and we're going to call them up and say, hey, um, is it okay for us to go ahead and start operations here? Because uh, we'd like to do that very, very soon. They'll call you back and say, um, yep, we're going to let you know when it's okay to do that kind of a thing. That's perfectly fine. 
Let's go ahead and slow this down. It's more than quick enough right now. Looks pretty good to me. And you can see we're nice and neatly into the green, which is exactly where we want it to be. Swinging over in this side, our reactor's cooling off slightly, which makes sense on account of the fact that um, you know, we're starting to actually suck power out of the darn thing. So that does not surprise me the slightest. So it's coming down. Um, that's perfectly fine. Like I said, um, we'll go ahead and reproduce all this. We still have a lot of wire in the condenser right now, and that's uh, kind of chilling everything aggressively. And of course, our generator, now that it sucked all the energy out of the steam we had in it, uh, we definitely need to do something about that because it's just too high right now. Now, in the old days, of course, uh, you could run over there, but the easiest way to do it now is you can actually just swing over here and basically dump stuff out of our handy dandy piece there. So you have a bunch of different valves here in case you need to do this. Uh, one, of course, is your vent valve. Uh, we can grab that sucker and we can open this one up right here. We also have our condenser drain, which is the one that we're actually going to be interested in. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do here. So let's see here, evaporator valve, condenser valve. We're just going to crank this thing open for a moment. And the reason we're cranking, of course, is we just have way too much water in the condenser. And that's making it very difficult to produce the amount of steam that we need. And you can actually see this is starting to come down a little bit. Perfectly good. And what you'll see is this will start flying down as we're ejecting all the water out of it. And once we get back into the green with this, of course, um, it'll make it much, much simpler for the purposes of uh, kind of getting all that stabilized again. Of course, it helps if you grab the right valve when you go to do this, but man, they make this difficult. So what we just did is we received a little line from on inside of the city here, and they've told us that it's okay to go ahead and initialize power at 11 o'clock. I'm assuming that's what they said. Ha ha, I was right. So good news for us, um, everything's nice and stabilized for the most point. So we just have to go ahead and uh, take a look at the last couple of things here. Uh, temperature is basically good enough. Uh, energy generation, we're pulling plenty of energy generation now. Our generator itself is going to catch up in a second. Pressure is starting to stabilize, which is what we expected. And we could use a little bit more speed here. Again, we're plenty, producing plenty of heat here. This is finally where it needs to be, which uh, puts a smile on my face as far as that goes. Temperature is good. Vacuum is good. Everything is basically ready on that side. So now, of course, it is time to fight the battle of all battles here. And of course, uh, this is kind of a neat little tool here. And what we have to do is we basically have to engage the power into town here. Now, none of this is going to kick in for us until the town clips over to 11 o'clock. And then, of course, they're going to give us the OK to basically start all the synchronization process. I'm just take a look real quick to make sure we're OK here. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about that too much. So my generator is producing plenty of electricity. Uh, the power they're going to be asking for us today is 5971. And of course, we now can play the game. <laughs> so what we have here is we have this handy dandy set of controls here. And this thing right now, as you can see, is telling us that um, right now we need to increase the speed of our generator. And the way we do this is we're just going to increase the speed slightly. Again, it doesn't take too much to do this. And then what we have to do is we have to close the breaker when it's synchronized. Let's see how it's still a little slow? And right there, close. Ah, I missed it. Go ahead and slow it down just a little bit. Nice. And now you can see our generator is now synchronized with our network that we're actually working on. So we're going to tap the exit key. And now we are providing electrical power to our lovely citizens uh, who are kind of out there in the field. Reduce that just a tiny bit. So again, you have to pay attention. So we are perfectly synchronized now with what's going out in the field. And you can actually see that our generator, some of the energy is actually being sucked out and uh, sent to our resistors, which makes perfect sense on account of the fact that uh, we're producing uh, so much energy out there. So I'm going to go take a look at my steam generator. That looks good to me. It's actually dropping quickly. Temperature looks pretty good. Pressurize looks pretty good. I'm just taking a look at everything. So now we are connected to the outside world, and we are producing electrical power for the world. Uh, the way we know this, of course, we've got minimum torque. We have a stable RPM. Coming over here, it's going to say we have no compliance. Ba, 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 ba. No Muse fans? No? No? All right. I see how it is. But the key thing here is um, we now have our generator talking to the electrical grid and the electrical grid and our generator are rotating in such a way that we have the ability to send them a nice smooth path of power here. We're going to go ahead and increase our power just a little bit here. And of course, on our generator side, we can see we're a little tiny bit warm, which is that's perfectly fine. We can go ahead and cool things off, probably bring it 99.2. Pressurizer is being taken care of the AO, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Bring this up just a little bit. That looks good to me. Condenser is finally behaving properly. Thank you, Mr. Condenser, for behaving. Generator, we're producing 7143. Uh, they're asking us to produce uh, 5971, which means a good chunk of our electrical power is actually being sent off into um, basically the nether. <laughs> it's being burnt up by the uh, actual devices that we have on board our resistors. And as long as you have resistance to go, you're not going to overheat anything or cause any issues with that. I have a feeling we're a little hot, though, but I'm just, again, watching everything. This is part of the fun, as they say. My generator's producing plenty. That's fine. I'm going to come over here real fast. Okay, the pressurizer's pretty good. Yeah, we're a little warm, but 
no game over warm or anything like that. And now you can see we're pretty much connected to the city. We're producing power. Everything is nice and neatly synchronized. I don't get this 51 hertz, though. Why is it 51 hertz? Shouldn't it be like 60? Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> this is a Portuguese game. So naturally, of course, it's all going to be using 50 hertz because it's Europe. But that's OK. I'm not going to stress about that too much. Now, some of you are going, why do they go through the trouble of bringing all those different components in? Why are they making this even more complicated than it is? Well, the reason is, of course, as I mentioned, we generate AC electricity, not DC electricity. And as you know, with AC is it has a specific frequency and we have to actually make sure that we get that correct. Now, some of you are sitting here going, now, would you ever need to come and change some of these other options here? You know what? I need to do this or change any of that. And uh, we don't really need to worry about most of those components, um, basically because we're basically controlling our load is what the expectation does. And if we wanted to, of course, we could crank up the load, but that would run the risk of slowing our generator down. And that would make everything uh, relatively complicated for us. But it is something we could do. Another thing we could do, too, that they added is we could actually bypass the generator completely if we wanted to for the purposes of bringing down um, the amount of torque we're producing right now. Like right now, you can see we're producing 6971. If we wanted to actually reduce the load on our resistors right now, we could actually come over here and we could bypass the actual uh, steam from flowing into the generator. Now, when you do something like that, of course, uh, what you're going to see is a couple different things at once. First of all, the uh, generator is going to lose a little bit of torque, which is okay. That's part of the fun. You can see right now we're producing 84 torque. But now the other thing you're going to do is you're going to be taking all that steam that was going into the generators, and you're actually going to be shoving it directly into the condenser. Now, the condenser, of course, is 35 degrees right now. You know, this thing is not working very hard. And um, that's fine. But remember, now we're sending a lot of steam that has not had energy removed from it directly into the condenser, which, of course, is going to give us some issues later on if we're not careful. I'm just doing my little runarounds real quickly here and see if everything's OK. Uh, heaters, uh, that can be shut off. Uh, when's 376 is pretty hot. Uh, the big thing you got to watch out for, by the way, is this temperature. This is the one that tends to break if you're not paying attention, if you let your generator get too hot. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the bypass a little bit here. Uh, let's go up to about 10 percent. I think that's plenty. Uh, let's see here. I like how you can actually synchronize these. And you know, what that will do, of course, if you have like six generators, you can skip them. And what this will do at this point now is um, you're going to watch this number slowly start to come down because that steam that was originally flowing through is now being skipped completely and is going, like I said, right over its own condenser. So this should actually come up in temperature a little bit, which it is. That's exactly what we expected it to do. You can actually go up uh, one click there. I think that'll be perfectly fine. And let's take a look. My power transformer is working beautifully. Uh, 316 amp is nothing. <laughs> but <laughs> that, those are rookie numbers, uh, kind of a thing like that. A uh, generator looks good to me. Um, of course, we're completely compliant right now. And uh, the reason I know that we're compliant is uh, they're asking us for uh, one power and we're providing them plenty of extra. I can actually increase my bypass even more here. We'll probably go up to 15. And all we're doing is we're skipping our generator just for the purposes of bringing down our voltage because we're not going to be shooting as much steam into it, if that makes sense. Keep in mind, as you do that, though, it has a little cascading effect down the line. So um, we'll have to kind of keep that in mind as we make all of our adjustments here. Let's see here, 69.58, come on down, come on down. That would be a reference that's, uh, actually, people would know that reference, so what am I saying, what am I saying? All right, looks good to me, looks good to me. Our power is good, derived energy is 400 kilowatts. Uh, one thing I do want to do while I'm thinking about it, though, internal supply, I'm going to set this automatic. There's no reason for that thing to run right now. We can run everything off of uh, basically this guy right now. I got my voltage just within one. That's pretty darn accurate. I'm not going to lie, kind of a thing like that. And basically what we do now is uh, we basically suck up all the points of all the hard work that we've created here. You can see that I've hit my compliance desired. Everything's looking pretty good. And I just run this thing for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Now, there's one more thing that we'll show you today. Uh, just kind of as a fun little sort of, oh, you know, you could do that kind of a thing. But you can actually press T and you can speed up time. And uh, the reason this is great is um, if you just want to kind of scoot through six hours of uh, sitting here working on the thing, you could just zip through as fast as you can. The only thing I got to warn you about, though, is um, the time of day will cause the power demand to change. And that's, of course, going to cause a big impact on some of the other kind of things you're going to have to twist and sort of dial in in order to make it work properly. Of course, the other thing you got to watch out for is you will slowly wear the plant down. And uh, that's kind of one of those things. And of course, maintenance is a video for another day. Enjoy.